right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Virtual GoPro 2022. Time to make some noise. And welcome back to the stage, Mr. Network Marketing Pro, Eric Worry. That's good. Okay, give me more heat in this mic, please. I can't hear myself on the stage. Thank you. It's still bouncing off the back wall for some reason. But anyway, welcome back. Lunch was good? All right, you ready for more social media? Ready to, to, to continue your notes? All right. We got a lot more that we're going to cover. You've made the decision, right? Who's made the decision that they're going to go master this? You're going to become world class, yes? All right. If you've made the decision at home, at home, put a number one into the chat. If you made the decision. There we go. That's the game. Make the decision, make it happen. If you're watching at home on Zoom, make sure you turn your cameras on. I don't want to see these blank cameras. We gave you a whole hour to go eat. Victoria's yawning because she just had lunch. I saw you, Victoria. Caught you. Totally caught you. Now that I've said yawn, I want to see who else yawns from a contagious yawn. Uh. <laughs> All right, fantastic. All right, so there's a few people, you know, a handful of people, Fraser Brooks being one, Alex being one, of course, um, and there's, there's some that really have, they've built a nice little business with their social media, and then some people have taken it to the next level. Totally crazy, outrageous results, not only in what they can do, but what they've duplicated. And our next presenter is one of those people that will show you specifically, step by step, how to be able to start this process and continue to scale it. Make sure you teach your teams the same thing, okay? So if you're ready for that, say, I'm ready. ready. All right, please welcome to the stage your friend and mine, Jesse Lee Ward. Anyone? Anyone excited to be here? Yes? Yeah, me too, me too, me too. Uh, big shout out to this in-person audience. I can see that half of you have translation. It's amazing. Uh, which means you probably flew from somewhere all over the world, which is unreal, which means you're jet lagged and you're still here at two o'clock in the afternoon uh, with all of us. And I love that. And then I want to shout out, of course, to our international people that are watching right now. If you want to drop your countries in the chat, I always love this my favorite part. Where are you guys watching from? Wow. We got... Emirates is here, love it. Canada, Netherlands, Australia. See, I love this because the Germans, oh, y'all know I love the Germans, right? Ireland, it's weird times, it's weird hours, and that has to do with that decision that Eric keeps talking about, right? All of these people who are staying up at weird hours or making the sacrifice to come and have to deal with translation and me being translated, and clearly I talk so slowly uh, with no energy at all. <laughs> Like, you're making all these sacrifices, but you made a decision today, and I respect that so much. So I just want to give a shout out to, to all of you. And then I want to jump in today because I have a full hour with you, and it's going to be a lot of content, a lot of stuff to actually do, if that's okay with you. Yeah? All right, cool. So has anyone decided? I know we've already asked, but who's decided 2023 is going to be unbelievable? Yeah? See, I love that for all of us because that is a decision that all of us can make. This will be my first recession uh, or whatever is going to come, right? Is anyone else, this is your first when you're like an adult, you're like, yeah, I remember 2008, like I lost like $4 in stocks, right? It was rough, 
right? And then the rest of you were like, shut up, children. It was terrible. Um, but I do know something, and I do know that the most wealth is created in economic contraction. And I do know that you are in the best profession possible with no limitations. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what country you came from. It doesn't matter your first, second, third, tenth language. You have a limitless income. Not really anybody else can say that. Most businesses have tremendous overhead. They're scared for next year. And you have the options and opportunity for a better way. So that's how I feel about it. All right, so I'm excited. So today I want to talk to you about how to create a brand online with some simple steps. Sound okay to everybody? Yeah, awesome. So this stuff works. I'm not going to teach you anything theoretical. I'm not going to tell you something that, you know, like, oh, like I thought about doing this one time and I didn't do it and I'm just I'm going to teach you something you should go home and try. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm more of a fan of like, oh my gosh, I did this and I made $10 million. Cool? That's like not an income claim because I've made way more than that, okay? All right, so... I'm like trying to, you know, FTC it up in here a little bit, right? All right, so it's going to be simple. It's going to be easy. You're going to like it. So here's the thing. The first thing you have to understand is that this is done brick by brick by brick. How many of you have heard of Will Smith? Anyone? Show of hands or in the chat or whatever, yeah? So I read his, um, I guess, autobiography. Did anyone else read it? Last year it came out. It's called Will. Okay, in case you have a hard time finding books, right? It's called Will. It's an autobiography. And he starts out the book by talking about how his dad used to make him and his siblings do things that they just like, how are you, by the way? Hi, we've never met, but hi, I like, know you. Um, this in-person stuff is so cool. I love like humans. Um, anyway, I do not have ADHD, leave me alone. So <laughs> his dad used to make them do things that they never understood until it was done. And how many of you have parents where you never understood why they made you do something? Or let's make it network marketing for a second. You have an upline that made you do something and you're like, I don't want to do it. I don't get it. Why do I have to do the presentations? Why do I have to do the TikToks? Why do I have to do the da 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 Right? But then the people who did the da 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 look back on it and go, aha. Yeah, it doesn't make sense until it's done. And so there's a story he tells at the beginning where his dad used to make him and his brother do terrible things. And one terrible thing he made them do was build a wall. Sounds pretty terrible, right? I think there's a difference sometimes. People are like, network marketing's hard work. I'm like, nah. We're not building walls, people, okay? We're not doing construction. We're not working in the coal mines. We are doing, we're talking to people, all right? That's really what we do. And so his dad said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take one brick, and then you're going to take the cement, and you're going to stack it on another brick. And then you're going to take another brick, and you're going to put cement on it, and you're going to stack it on another brick. And he made Will Smith and his brother do this all day, every day through their summer vacation. Now, I don't know about you, but that does not sound like a vacation to me. <laughs> right? But see, it's interesting because it's just... My mom, she used to make me do like homework all through the summer. Anyone else have one of these weird parents who bought you those books? Come on, there's got to be some other weird nerds in here with crazy parents. Thank God. Right? See? Now you, I'm looking literally right now in this moment back on my parents like, oh, maybe you were trying to make smart children. Right? All the other kids are outside playing. My mom's like, mathematics. I'm like, I don't need that for nothing. I got a calculator. Right? Oh, man. See, I'm remembering all these things now. So back to the bricks. So Will Smith's dad is making him do this brick by brick by brick by brick by brick thing. And he's like, Dad, why are we doing this brick by brick by brick by brick by brick thing? I don't understand. And then at the end of the summer, him and his brother looked. And they had built an entire wall. So it doesn't have to make sense right away. I think a lot of us look at this business and this brand and we look at people on social media and we think, I'm so scared to do that or I'm so scared to expose myself or I'm so scared of what somebody's going to think about me or what somebody's going to say about me or what somebody's opinion's going to be. And I heard something the other day when I was listening to a podcast and I wish I could credit them, but they said, social media is not changing any of you. You should actually write this down. Social media is not changing any of you, but it is exposing some of you. 
no one really reacted in studio, which means they're really offended, okay? People virtually, you probably reacted at home. They didn't react here, okay? Sheridan reacted. You guys didn't react, right? Because we're so scared. We're stuck in our egos. We're so concerned of what everybody's going to say and think. And, well, what if I say the wrong thing online? Or what if somebody judges me because, you know, I don't know, like I, I, look, too, I look different here. Or my hair is not perfect there. Or I look, you know, I, whatever. I know I look different, by the way. I like all the comments. Thanks. <laughs> I look so good, don't I? Wow. Okay, I know. <sighs> anyway, I just want to take a moment for myself. Um, but anyway, so, it, but it, again, it's that brick by brick. It's, it, and it's just who you are. This whole brand thing, we're going to get into how you figure out what your brand is, but I need you to understand one real concept. And the only thing that your brand actually is, is who you are. It's only going to expose who you are. And if you want to call yourself a leader in the network marketing profession or a leader in the world or you are compassionate or empathetic or you are kind or you are giving and you are, you know, what's philanthropic? I can't say it. Philanthropy, you know what I'm trying to say. Then like you, you can show it or you can be exposed. That's all I'm trying to say. If you're a good person, it's going to show. If you're not, you might have a hard time. Okay? So I want you to focus on this. This is such a good quote. So I'm friends with Jim Quick, and uh, Alex had a really good point. Pay attention to who you're, paying, who you're spending time with, even just in your ears. I got to, I've spent a lot of time with Jim, and Jim said this quote, and it just blew, like, I, I don't know, there's sometimes some people say things, it just hits you, and he said, instead of asking, what do I need to do, try asking, who do I need to become? And isn't that what network marketing is? Hey, so, so many of you want the tactics, and I'm going to give them to you, but instead of saying, oh my gosh, just give me the blueprint, Jesse Lee, just tell me ex exactly what I have to, have to know, I, just, I need to know the step-by-step-by-step, by step by step. I get it, we need the step-by-step-by-step, by step by step. but what if you just focused on being a good person? Because you need to understand, some of you have a weird thing about money, I know this to be a fact, you're worried about making your first million dollars because you think it's going to change you, but the fact of the matter is, it's not. It's going to elevate exactly who you are. So what if you got to step into the better version of yourself? What if you got to step into a more powerful, giving, compassionate, caring, loving, kind person, right? That's all money's going to do. And who do you get to become in the process? I think this is Jim Rohn, but he always talks about it's not about the million dollars. It's about who you have to become to make the million dollars. <laughs> oh, you have some effects. It's true, though. And some of you followed me years ago at my first GoPro stage. You're like, oh gosh, I'm not even going to watch Jessie Lee because she's the loud girl with the, she's crazy energy. She's this, she's that. I'm different now, aren't I? Like, what, how many of you are like, I am like, not even sure that's her. She doesn't look like herself. She doesn't talk like herself. Her energy's definitely there, but she's different. She's polished. She speaks better. Right? That happens when you're becoming the best version of yourself. And more of you have to understand that. It's not all the tactics. It's just not. It's about who you become through all of it. So I love that quote. All right. So let's talk about branding a little bit because you need to get good at this. I made a big mistake. And I want to save you from the big mistake. How many of you have ever... <laughs> it's going to sound really mean, but I don't mean for it to. How many of you recruit, have recruited some people? Let's like get some like flames in the chat if you've recruited somebody. Or I'm pretty sure this audience has recruited a couple people. One, two, 10,000, right? Right? One, two, pick a few. So, <laughs> how many of you have recruited the wrong person? <laughs> Don't show the audience camera, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right? Everyone's got their hand up. We've all recruited the wrong people. And I want to be the one to tell you, it's your fault. It was my fault. I recruited the wrong people because I was portraying the wrong stuff on social. I was portraying the wrong stuff in front of presentations. I just was. I was attracting all these people I did not want to spend time with. I really felt like... I was people's unpaid therapist for a while there. Anyone been there? I'm like, these people decided that, that network marketing is cheaper than therapy, and that is why they joined my team. I, that is exactly what happened. They said, oh, the, my, my, my monthly subscription to BetterHelp is definitely more expensive than my auto shipment with Jesse Lee, so I'm going to go ahead and join that team. <laughs> It's funny because it's so true. And I'm like on these calls and everyone's crying all the time. And then they say, oh, you're too bossy, Jesse. I'm like, what are you talking about? My nickname's Boss Lee. What do you expect over here, right? <laughs> like, come on, right? <sighs> and I just started getting frustrated. I'm like, what is wrong? And then I started taking a look at my brand. And I was this kind of, for a lack, I'm going to insult myself. I was a little bit whiny, 
you know? I was a little bit like, just come, and this is where you come to heal, and we are gonna do all of these things. And look, I've got this really nice part of me, but let me tell you something, I'm here to build businesses, okay? And if I am being a therapist, then I am not qualified to do that, and I'm trying to teach you how to build a business, something's gonna get lost in the sauce, and it's probably my paycheck. So we have to stop that. All right, I attracted all these wrong people. It was like I wasn't specific in my brand. So sometimes I would be a little aggressive and then sometimes I'd be so, so sweet that it almost hurt, right? And then sometimes I would be just like, in your face, do this, do that. And some people loved it and then I'd get the comments that are like, oh, you're kind of scaring me. I'd be like, oh God, I'm scaring people. I better like be nice again and just go back over to being super nice all the time. Like, oh my God, you got your fur. This, this was the theme song to my life. I don't even know what this is, but this was definitely the theme song. All right, and then I was like starting to hate my business. Some of you, I know you are here today because you are hating your business. And if something does not change for you this weekend, you are out. Good luck with that, by the way. I threatened that one time. And then uh, Lisa Grossman said, where else are you gonna find somewhere that pays you 200 grand a month? That's when I only made 200 grand a month. This is like a long time ago. But you know, like, you get the point. I was like, you got a point. Like, I don't think I can call, you know, Geico and say, hey, I'm trying to get a job. I don't know, like, I got, I'm trying to get a job. Will you pay me 200 grand a month? They'd be like, yeah, I don't think so. So I had to focus on who I wanted to attract, the people I wanted in my business, the people I wanted to spend time around. And this stuff hurts. Alex hit on this too, we're super congruent. There are gonna be people you love that you have to spend less time around. It sucks. I heard something the other day, and I don't know if it's biblical, but it was someone who said she heard it from a pastor. He said, or she, she told me her pastor said, um, some people are scaffolding for people. The best mentors are scaffolding. You know the stuff that they build buildings with? and your job is to keep building people up, and then you have to move on to another project because they're not ready to keep building. I went, <gasps> it's really true. But if you make your brand very specific on the kinds of winners that you want to do business with, the kinds of people you want to be partnered with, your whole business shifts and you start loving it again. You stop looking all over the place to try to do different things and different projects and all kinds of stuff, and, and then you become this master of none. So just stop. Keep the main thing the main thing, right? Okay, so let's talk about this. Branding and niche. I get asked about this all day long. How do I come up with my brand? How do we do this? We've got to lay a foundation. So here are some things you can ask yourself. Like, who are you? And this is not that difficult, okay? Those of you who are parents, I want you to try to not write down mom or dad. I want you to think about who you were before you had the kids. What did you love to do? What made you smile? Now, I'm gonna take it deeper for some of you who are like, nope, don't even remember that. That was like blackout years. I don't know what I did. <laughs> okay, cool. Here's a better question. How many of you have been a child before? <laughs> Trying to get some participation, okay. All right, so we've all been children. What was the stuff you loved to do when you had the chance to pick? Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, let me give you some, some examples. How many of you were like me, and you would go down to the river and get like dirty in the mud with the crawdaddies in the woods, and you pull like the little sticker things out of your, yeah, right? And your mom's like, you are grounded because I told you to be home before dark, and it's dark. Anyone else? Yeah? What are you doing in the in trees again, Jesse Lee? Anyone else? Like, you got like leaves sticking out of your hair and whatever, yes? I love it, there's a lot of women in here who are like, that is totally me. And you're like the prettiest little bombshells in the room. Like, love this, we're gonna get to your brand. Here we go, I'm helping, I'm fixing you, okay? But how many of you were like, no, 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 I was the kid that loved the video games. Like if I got to pick go outside or I got to pick video games, I wanted to do the video games, I wanted to do the technology, I liked the computer games, I liked all that stuff. Whatever it is, I'm just giving you some examples. Go back to back when nobody was judging you, or if they were, you didn't care. And somewhere in there is probably your current brand. So if you look at me, I was always this little independent kid who would run alone in the woods, get dirty and muddy, and I wanted to travel and play, but we didn't have money, so travel and play meant my imagination in the woods with the crawdaddies and whatever, okay? I'm from the country, if you can't tell, right? We'd jump on the hay bales and all this weird stuff. I didn't want the TV, I didn't, we didn't have it anyway, but whatever. I was much more interested in that. 
If you look at me now, I'm the girl who likes to travel. And I, don't, I can travel first class, obviously. I'm a network marketing professional. They pay well, okay? But I like to get grungy. I liked laying on the ground in Italy this summer, like for real. Like there was like a teepee, and we were in the ground in Italy. I didn't even know this place existed. It was very gross. There was like, I was getting like thorns in my hand. I'm like, I'm living for this. You're like peeing on trees and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was like a moment. But I was like really into it, you know? But I like this kind of adventure stuff is my whole point. It just makes sense to who I am now. Is that making sense? So take yourselves back. Help your team do this. Take them back. Who are you actually? And then what makes you unique? So your unique value proposition. I'm gonna teach you an exercise in just a second that'll make a lot more sense, but why you? Why would I join Giordano? What makes him different, right? Why would I join David? Slovakia is like this big, right? <laughs> like what, why, why you? What about you is special? Because there's something in that for all of you. It can't just be some super generic brand. Oh, I'm just the entrepreneurial person. I'm just the this, I'm just the that. No, no, no. There's something in there that makes people go, I just like you a lot. I don't know what it is. Okay? What is your mission? This is what we're really going to go through in a second. But what do you stand for? Some of you have these, these missions that set your soul on fire, right? You're just pulled towards it. You can call it a why, a mission. There's some kind of bigger calling, right? Just before you dive into this branding for your, your network marketing business, just ask yourself stuff. Here's some things to write down. Like what insights, skills, or experience make you different? This will help you. Some of you are like, I'm not unique, I don't know. She's loud, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't, she, what is Jessie Lee talking about? Here she goes, making no sense. No, no, I'll help you. Write down what insights, skills, or experience makes you different from your competitors. Why you? What do you know that the person sitting next to you doesn't? I'll give you one right now for every single one of you. You came to a network marketing professional event. You know a lot more than Joe Schmo down the street trying to sell the same thing as you. I'm just telling you. I guarantee you know more. That's one value add, right? What trainings have you been on? What, who, who do you know, right? Who's in your network? Because your network starts to determine your net worth, right? If you can't think of a single thing that is unique about you and what you do, you need to reframe and start thinking differently about what you do in your business because there should always be something different. And a lot of you are stuck in your ego. I don't mean to whip you so hard, but we're going into a new year and like, I gotta tell you guys, it's important that you start really driving your business home and taking this seriously. Otherwise, you're going to get lapped. You're going to see people you've never met before, you don't know them, you've never heard their names, they'll be on stage next year, and you're going to be offended. you got to spend some time thinking about this, okay? That comes out of love, I promise. All right, so values. What's driving you? So maybe what is your purpose? Maybe what are your passions? What are you excited about when you wake up? What makes you wonder? What do you, what do you think about when you're in bed? What do you think about when... No, forget that. Shh. It is me. Listen, what do you think about when you're in your shower? That one's better, you know? Like, I, that's where I get my creative ideas. The gym and the shower are where my brain just goes crazy. Anyone else? The world is still in there. I don't, do, I don't know how y'all listen to podcasts in the shower. I would be writing on the walls or something, okay? I don't do anything like that, right? So, so when I'm still and I'm starting to get creative, where is your wonderment? What, do you, did you ever wonder what it would be like to build a business in XYZ country? I did. That started when I was a kid waiting tables in New York City. And all the ho nobody, none of the waiters wanted the hostesses to sit people who didn't speak English with them. It's a real story. I made a fortune off of international people. I was like, sit them with me. They don't speak English. They know what smiles are. <laughs> and I would write thank you in their language at the top of the check every single time. And let me tell you what, they know how to tip. They just know y'all are being ignorant. <laughs> That's like funny, but like it was true, so you can laugh, all right? But what makes you wonder, I kept thinking to myself, like what would it be like to have an international business? And the crazy thing is some of you think this is impossible. You know, trust me, some people listening right now think this is impossible. My first company almost 12 years ago, they told us, no, 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 you have to build in America, you're American. And then we have an Australian market and you can build in Australia if you're Australian. Nobody can cross-pollinate, those are our two countries. 
And I was one of those people who was like, I'm a lifer, right? This wasn't network marketing, by the way, it was direct sales, but I was like, no, I'm in this forever. I'm in this forever. No, but I was so passionate about serving an international community and I didn't know how. It doesn't really matter how. I have one of the biggest international teams in network marketing now. I do, okay? So it made me wonder, which made me want to build a brand around it, which made me go, how do I serve people who don't speak English? Hmm, and then I learned. Do you understand? That's how all of this comes together. What makes you feel determined? What makes you get up like, ah, Superman, Superwoman? That's probably part of your brand. And then maybe it's something about serving people. I think that's one of the greatest things about network marketing is we serve people. The biggest leaders are the people who took themselves out of it and said, how do I help more people come to the front? Promise you. So let's talk about a target audience. Some of you need this first line more than you need anything. You cannot serve everyone. That's what I was trying to do. That's why I made that big thing about I was being a therapist, da, 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 that whole thing, okay? I was trying to be everything for everyone. And how did that work out for me? Not so well, okay? It was driving me crazy. I like competitors. I like kind competitors, to be specific, okay? Because you can make a fortune in this world and do it by being a good person. I don't know who needs to hear that, but I am a good freaking person. I care so much about people, and my money reflects that more than it reflects anything else, okay? But you can't help everyone. For some of you right now, you're like, she is way too intense for me. She is out there. I don't know what's going on with her. The tattoos are unprofessional. Ah, la, 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 la. Shut up, okay? You're not for me. I don't care. I'm not trying to serve you. Just like close your eyes and listen to what I have to say because it's good. And then when you are done judging me, you can open your eyes again, all right? I'm not trying to help everybody. And by trying to help everybody like some of you are, you're helping nobody. If you're having a hard time recruiting, it's probably because you're trying to make everybody feel comfortable. And you can't attract your people if you're trying to make everybody feel comfortable. So decide who do you want to reach? Who's important for you? Maybe you really want to help single moms. Maybe you really want to help people who have been professionals before and have been hurt in their careers. Maybe you want to help people who have made millions of dollars already, but they did it in an unethical way, and they're not proud of it. I don't know. And again, how are you the one who's uniquely qualified? Maybe you were in that profession. Maybe you were a single mom. Maybe you did struggle. Maybe you came from another country and English wasn't your first language. So, wouldn't you be the person who can help those people inside of your brand? Yes. Write down that next line too. What do those people like? This is an exercise. You can't do this right now, so like take a photo, take it in your notes. You need to spend some time on this. Once you decide who that person is, call it a single mom again, what are their biggest problems? And how can you fix that? What do they like? outside of like natural diapers, because that's stupid, okay? I mean, it's not stupid, but like, come on, guys, right? Maybe it's traveling with just their partner instead of with the kids, right? Maybe it's being able to say yes to the kids instead of being a no mom, right? Maybe it's giving life experiences to the whole family. Maybe it's a house that's a comfortable space for the kids to grow up in instead of a tiny apartment, right? Maybe it's they like short videos. Maybe it's they like videos with captions on them. I'm giving you a ton of stuff, right? Ask yourself, how does the person that I'm thinking of in my head right now, how do they consume content? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Okay, so then where can you find them? Are they on TikTok? Do those people live on YouTube? Are they Facebook people? Are they podcast people? Where are these people? Because that's where you need to be creating content. And a lot of it. Instead of trying to be everywhere for everyone, where can you find your people? Now, your people are on every platform, by the way, but there are certain ways certain people like to consume content. And then the last one, like I said, what are the problems and the needs that you can solve? And start talking through that. All right, this next thing I've never shown you ever at GoPro or ever anywhere, ever at any point in time, ever, ever, ever. So we're, I'm gonna blow your mind. Oh my God, I'm kidding, it's already happened. Boom, okay, I'm making my own sound effects. Brand statement, please take a photo. You need to do this. Every single one of you needs to steal this, coach your teams on it, and like, I don't even care. You can be like, it's mine, it came from my brain. Whatever, liars, I don't care. Just teach the profession so we can explode. Thank you. Okay, just steal it. Go make a YouTube video, all right? 
So all of the stuff I said, you need to make a brand statement. How many of you have ever watched me on live video just out of curiosity? Like, you don't have to do it all the time. You don't have to be like a super fan. You just have seen something. Even if it's to be like annoying, you shut it off. <laughs> okay, a lot of you. Cool. Love that. Hi, friends, by the way. I have the same intro on every single video, if you haven't figured it out. And if you ask me what I do, that's what I do. And all I did, write it down like this, by the way, like dink, 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 dink. This is an exercise. So what, who, where, why, when. That's the order, okay? What, say what. Just make sure you're listening. Who, where, why, when. That's the order. Because then you can create a statement almost without thinking. So all of you who have been lost in your brand, you're like, I can't figure it out. I have 19 brands. Mwah. No, you don't, okay? You have one brand. And that's the order it goes in. And this is gonna show everybody why they join you and they do not talk to the competitors. Okay? Read, I mean, read it. Hi, I'm Jesse Lee. I lead an international network marketing business called The Empire, which helps entrepreneurs make six and seven figures a year from their phones using trademark systems unique only to our brand, providing busy people the confidence of scaling a business online in a crowded social media world. Now, maybe I'm not better than you, but I know I sound better than you right now. <laughs> Okay, like I just did that. All it is is what, who, where, why, when. Now, a little like bonus is after you write this out, test it with somebody. Like when you do a little group breakout at some point, this, you know, maybe one of the breakouts can be you guys test this on each other, okay? Because something I know to be true is we like to add a lot of extra words. We're networkers, you know? Or like the art of persuasion, right? If I just keep talking, I'll just talk them into it, you know? That's like very old school. You know, you need some finesse these days, right? So when you do the little breakouts and you share this with each other, like be open to feedback when somebody says, man, why was it nine minutes long? It was supposed to be what, who, where, why, when. It was not supposed to be your life story. She gave us five words. Why did you do 5,000? You wrote a paragraph, you wrote an essay. And then help each other. Because if you can nail that, you can start saying that every time in person somebody says, what do you do? Anytime somebody DMs you, right, as an influencer or something online, influencer, right, you can be like, oh, this is what I do. There's my brand statement. You can put your brand statement all over the place. It can be the head of your website. It can be all over the place. Is that useful for everybody? Will you, will you train that to your team's leaders? Yes? Okay, that will help a lot of people. That would make me very happy if you did that. All right, so this concept of four, again, I love that Alex mentioned four as well. I love four too, okay? The number four, what are the four topics you want to create content around? Because now that you probably are starting to think, oh, now I know what my brand is, well, you need to create content around it. Because if you don't create content around it, then it's gonna be hard to scale, right? And everything in 2023, and I've really thought this for the last two years, it's omnipresence. It's uh, even if you don't like me, even if you think I'm nuts, even if you think I'm amazing, even if you think you're the best, best person ever, I want you to think of me when you see stuff. I want you to go, oh my gosh, that makes me think of Jesse Lee. Ah, that reminds me of Boss Lee. Oh, yeah. Oh, somebody said L O L O. That makes me think of Jesse Lee. Oh, I see this, I see that. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I get sent a lot of pictures of Lamborghinis. I'm like, that's kind of cool, you know? Like, because I keep buying them, but then, you know, whatever. Okay? So, but what do you want to create content around? It's up to you. So like, these are mine, by the way. These are things that if you follow me, you see this is really all I ever talk about. It's just packaged up with a different bow sometimes with different kinds of content. All I talk about a lot of the time is leadership and business. So tons of reels on this, right? A lot of TikToks. I have a whole TikTok page that's only business, right? My live videos are coaching in business, right? My podcast is all business. Leadership business, leadership business, leadership business. Then randomly I'll pop up somewhere. Like that photo is Dubai. I was in Dubai two weeks ago, and then I flew to Hawaii, which is why I'm tan again. Thank you, God. Okay, like I travel a lot. Nine countries this last, uh, this last summer. Well, more than nine, but nine in one month. Well, anyway, you get the point. So I'll post that all the time. Sometimes I'll do travel tips. People like to know, how did you go for a month? You were gone for a month in three different climates. You took one bag. I'm like, mm -hmm, let me show you how it's done, right? So my brand's around that. Authenticity, I talk a lot about, would you just be you? One of the fun, like, 
Years ago, I used to do these tubby time videos. Some of you are OGs to Jesse Lee, and you know what I'm talking about. It's not what it sounds like, okay? But I would get in a bathtub, fully clothed, for the record, for anyone who's concerned, okay? Fully clothed, and I would give sales tips, or marketing tips, or branding tips, business tips from a bathtub. And the reason why I did it was because I wanted more eyeballs on me. Now, I can be kind of weird, so it was super authentic to me. To me, I'm like, I don't really care. You know, I don't care if people screenshot me in a bathtub and make a hate video, like, publicity's publicity, right? I just don't care. And it was good, there were good sales tips, it worked. And it became this thing where tubby time, tubby time, tubby time, tubby time, it'd be shared hundreds of times, thousands of times, it went crazy. But it was authentic to me, because I'll do weird stuff. The weird thing, though, is that people copied that, thinking that was the magic. Okay, the bathtub was not the magic, okay? Just let me be your friend and tell you, you don't need to climb into a bathtub and put bubbles in and like a face mask and be on, you know, whatever. I started seeing people trying to do tubby time all sexy, like no clothes, bubble, moving bubbles in areas and like trying to do the most and like lighting candles. I'm like, I'd set a fire, I move too much, you know? So it was not, we were gonna have like an electrical fire or a regular fire, it was gonna, definitely gonna be a fire, right? So it was strange, I'm like, see, that just, it's not really authentic to who you are. You should probably stay clothed, you know? Like, not all of us can do tubby times. If that feels very good to you, you're like, that is so me. I love bubble baths. Well, then you just go ahead and tubby time. You know, you do your thing. My point being, I talk a lot about authenticity. I talk a lot about if you want to build your business big, you have to be you. It's definitely part of my brand. And then general entrepreneurship is part of my brand. Network marketing will always be the main thing. This is my cash cow vehicle that has allowed me to become a serial entrepreneur. I own a lot of businesses at this point in time, like a lot. I manage a lot. It's Bossley Enterprises and I have a whole staff, the whole, the whole craziness because of network marketing, okay? That's what's happened because of this. And I share that with people. I tell people, you better join the network marketing profession because we have no overhead. All my other businesses all have overhead. If any of you also own hair salons like me, you know everything breaks. Why? Why? Why does everything break? Can anyone tell me why the tiles from the ceiling are leaking at the same time the sink is leaking? Why is everything leaking all the time? What's going on, okay? And how much shampoo do you really have to use on one person's head? Like, would you please stop, okay? Like, I know you're not spending the money, but I'm spending the money on the damn shampoo, okay? Like, everything costs money. They gotta pay the staff and they're unappreciative. Oh my God, let's not even get into it. Just do network marketing. Okay, and just like side note, you know those stupid memes on the internet? Oh God, I'm getting fired up. You know those stupid memes on the internet where it's like, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Come on, who's seen them? Please just judge the people who repost that. Just judge them quietly. And then pray for them. Like, yes, we do. But we made our first million doing one thing, okay? You can't focus on nine things at once, seven things at once, three things at once. Okay, you can't ride two horses at once, I think is what they say, you know? It's impossible, it's impossible. All right, so I'm just being your friend and telling you, please, focus on getting this thing you're in right now to your seven figures, and then start talking about other stuff. Side note, but like it's important to me to be real with you. It's part of my brand. Okay, the next thing, you go into subcategories. This is how you create the content. So you've got your four things that you like to talk about. I just gave you my four. Did anyone else write down four things? Good, the rest of you. Homework assignment, do it, okay, thanks. Inside of this, here are some things you can make content around. Because some of you go, well, I don't know how to make content though around it, like my passion is gardening. I don't know why I think of these weird things. Like, I do not garden, guys. Like, I do not have the nails to garden, you know? Like, ew. You know those like roly-poly bugs? Uh, anyway, no, not for me, okay? But I'm gonna try to do gardening for you. So like, if I were a gardener, a subcategory to create content that converts, what are some common mistakes in gardening? Let me get, I'm gonna be a farmer for a minute. Let me go back to my farm. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Okay, let me be a farmer. I think that I think it's a common mistake to plant your crops in the same fields every year. Any farmers in here who can like give me a nod or something? Oh, we got people in the chat. Sue's helping me. Overwatering, yes, yes. Crop circulation, yes. Oh, the chat is helping me right now. This is so good. Raising butterflies, yes. Okay, so common mistakes. I don't know if we put the butterflies and the flowers. I don't really know what we're doing here, people. But a common mistake would be butterflies and worm castings. What? 
Okay, so you could make content around tilling the soil too much. This is great. I love this participation. Okay? You can make content around myths and rumors. Like, it is a well-known myth that if you don't put butterflies next to the peonies, they'll never grow. Okay? You can give guides and tips, right? Great tip. Da, 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 da. I'm going to stop pretending to be a gardener because this is going nowhere fast, guys. Okay? So common questions. I'm commonly asked when I'm gardening, how did I grow tropical plants in Minnesota? Right? None of you are gardeners. I should have asked you for something. I'm getting nothing from the audience. Nothing. All right, no gardeners here either. You can tell stories. You can give inspiration. You can tell personal experiences, like personal tales. This is all content ideas, guys. Grab the photos, okay? Belief systems everybody has around gardening, harvesting the crops too early. Love that, okay? Objections you always get, like it takes too long. I should have just done this with network marketing, shouldn't I? Oops. Okay, right? Social proof, controversies, and then daily life or real moments inside of it. Is that helpful? Okay, and you can do tons of this. You can, you can draft, which just means you're batching content. You're making a whole bunch of content. Make a bunch of this when you feel like you're in the mood to talk about your, your brand. When I feel like talking about travel, I can give you all the travel tips in the world. I can tell you the best flights to find. I can tell you all the best rewards things. I can tell you the best credit cards. Right? Would that be useful for people who like to travel? Of course. Would you like to know the best countries to go to? Would you like some insider things on where you can save money and, and, and not spend money? Do you want to know the best restaurants to go to that are like in the hole, like where you really want to go? Right? In some of these countries I've been to, right? Of course you would. So when I'm in the mood to talk about it, I can make a ton of content all at once around those subcategories. Okay? All right. Now here's why we make content. There's different purposes for everything. So you need to be doing all of these. And I know not everyone wants to. You're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know about the reels. I don't know about the live video. I don't know about YouTube. I don't know about, I don't know. Okay, unless you're just gonna crush something, like maybe you're the best writer ever and your copy moves mountains, then you've gotta do more stuff than just the one thing you keep doing over and over again or else you're never gonna get new results. And I'm constantly innovating and trying new stuff and different strategies and writing different things in my copy, changing the way my captions are on Instagram. I'll add new stuff. I'll take stuff out. I'll try sharing stuff to stories. I'll try all kinds of different stuff to see what moves the insights because I'm one of those crazy people, <laughs> okay? But there's different reasons you do different stuff. How many of you need more leads? How many of you, when your sponsor tells you, oh my gosh, you know, we're going to have this crazy sale coming up. It's we just had Cyber Monday, I guess, but let's pretend it's Cyber Monday. We've got Cyber Monday coming up, or a company's anniversary is coming up. We're going to do a blowout sale. And you're excited, but you know you only have the same people. Is this anyone else's struggle? Yes? If you want fast leads, I'm just telling you, Reels, TikToks, and YouTube Shorts with really good calls to action, which I'm going to give you in a second here. That will expand your exposure, that will expand your reach. I can't tell you why stuff goes viral. Some of my speaking goes viral more than any of the trending sounds I use, okay? You just never know what it's gonna be, so create, 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 create. Whatever you're comfortable with, and I'll give you a quick tip in general at the very end of this content purposes part. Static feed posts are important. People wanna know the written word. And if you're really bad at this, a little tip you can use is on your phones, you know the little microphone? The talk to text, I think is what it's called. If you talk to text, you're gonna start getting good at writing because you're already good at speaking. And then it's gonna be written in your voice, okay? Try giving education and value in your written posts, your static posts that people look at. Your comments and your engagement should be used for networking. And if you're not already actively uh, reaching out to people and engaging on their stuff, it's a problem. One of my things that I do when I change it every two to three months is I, I pick two influencers that I like in my brands, the brands that I like, the niches I like, I follow them really closely, because you can, you know, feature, you can like pin them currently on Instagram and everything, so you can like choose the people. And I will go every day to those people's pages, I will engage on their stories, and I will also engage on their posts. But good comments, right? Valuable comments that make people go, whoa, okay, she actually read what I wrote. And it's not for anything except for I'm networking. You'll start networking, people in the comments will start to come to you to look at your page to see, oh, I follow this person closely too, they're a big influencer in XYZ brand or niche, right? Well, I wonder why she posts on it so much, maybe I should follow her too. That's how the networking happens, make sense? Okay, so make sure you're engaging on people's things, something most of you are so bad at, and there's a lot of top earners in here and it blows my mind that you don't respond to people. 
is when you get comments, can you start talking back to people? Like, it is so weird to me that you have literal leads for your business that you claim to want to grow, commenting on your post of you and your kids, or you and your partner, or you and your trip, or you and your whatever, and you don't respond to them. Well, good for you, because when they comment on my stuff, I'm responding to them and I'll recruit them. So thank you for the recruit, I appreciate it. Okay, like I'm creating relationships. What is wrong with you? You guys are like the middle school bullies. People are talking to you and you ignore them. It's rude. Okay, so that's how you're going to network. Stories, you know, your Facebook stories, your Instagram stories, your WhatsApp stories, all of these, that builds trust. And I know some of you think it's weird to post your day. Little great tip for this is take all the videos now on your main camera. Okay, take all the photos of whatever you're doing, all the, all the, all the videos, all of whatever. Post it when you leave here or when you're done, later in the day. You can basically have a ton of content that you want to post and then post it when you're, when you're done, right? And then you've got an arsenal of stuff to create content with, tons of little short clips, tons of little videos, etc. okay? Just makes your life a lot easier. But stories are important because that's where people go, oh, I like her, oh, I like him. And ladies, I'm just letting you know, the most highly paid influencers in the world, do you know what their brand is? Yeah, who said that? Oh, best friend. Beauty, beauty influencers are paid way more than anybody else. Do you know what number two is, number two category? She's well-trained, okay. Fitness, fitness is number two. Like by far, like any of these brands that buy ads, that spend money um, on agencies, this kind of stuff, it's the beauty influencers that crush. And do you wanna know why? Because you feel like they're real. Right? If you're a beauty person, you start your video barefaced. Right? You're sitting there, you're probably feeling like a dump truck. You feel like you look a little ugly, maybe. I don't know. I went to Europe for like months on end, and the European boys told me I wasn't allowed to wear makeup anymore. And then they fought with me this morning about wearing makeup on stage and whatever's a big thing. Okay. But anyway, I used to do makeup videos all the time. Okay. All the time. And it built so much authority live videos authority. And it built so much trust because people were like, oh, I see what she's really like. Every single day, I post in my stories a photo of me working out. And I, I mean, I look cute because I'm cute, but I don't look cute, man. I look sweaty. I look gross. I'm like, bah. you know, it's like a cute pose, but I know I'm not looking all that good. Okay? Every day. It just builds trust. So how can you become somebody who's more trustworthy so people want to join you? And then direct messages, since I already said live videos, how you build the authority and whatever else your brand is, is that's where you connect with people. That's where you close the loop. That's where you make the sales. How many of you made a couple sales on Black Friday or Cyber Monday? A couple of you? Six people in the room. We got all these leaders and only six of them made a dollar. It's amazing. Okay, so I've got an opportunity for the rest of you that didn't make any money. Okay, I'll talk about it later off the stage. Okay, actually out of the building because it's GoPro. We don't pitch anything here. What the hell? All right, anyway. Okay, y'all are crazy. You're supposed to be the leaders. Terrible. All right, but anyhow, uh, my whole point is how many of you it went down in the DM? You built the connection on the live video and then you, you hammered them in the clothes in the DM. Yes, exactly. That's why you have to create content everywhere else. It's so important you have authority everywhere. So social media is your funnel. Y'all like this guy? Anyone like his presentation earlier? Yeah, that's one of my best friends. I love him so much. So I got to see him in very beautifully pregnant Svetlana two weeks ago. I was in Dubai. And so he is obviously great as well at using social media as a funnel. Each of these things are your best funnels, okay? Your TikTok, your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube, all of this stuff. It's just a funnel. I get a ton of leads off of all of these, but every single piece of content must have all those things. Let's take a quick photo because I'm gonna get to the next thing, okay? So calls to action, I'm gonna give you calls to action in five minutes or whenever I get there. <laughs> Right, but you have to talk to these people. You have to ask for the engagement. It's so important, all right? And we gotta make it more simple. So here are some ways to make your content more simple. What I do, and this is a great example I'll play for you really fast, is I start by making one piece of content that I then turn into probably 100 to 200 pieces of content. And the way I do that is simply by going live on my video. I'm streaming it on four places at once, which includes YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm also recording a podcast at the same time, so I guess it's five pieces of content before I even do anything with it. Then I'll make the content where I turn it into a whole bunch of reels, okay? 
I'll turn it into tons and tons and tons of reels. Now, I do outsource this, but I'm going to tell you right now, CapCut is the app you're going to want if you want to do this on your own. That app is right there on that list, okay? I went live. I have a content creator who pulls the video off. He likes that angle the best. This one, for whatever reason, converts the most. Happens to be my Facebook video. I just know what my setup is. And he makes reels that go crazy. This is building my brand so fast because it's not even just a reel. Every time he posts it as a reel on TikTok, or excuse me, a reel on Instagram, he posts it as a reel on Facebook, as a TikTok on my Bossly Biz TikTok page, and as a YouTube short on my YouTube page. So every single thing that he does is getting turned into tons of content that I then also reshare to the stories and I also engage with, with a really good caption where I tell everybody if they do share it, I will personally reach out. You should write that down. Okay, so it's just this. This was does not day. matter what the president's doing. It's not gonna affect you. The most wealth is created during downturns of economies. People are so concerned right now about the economy, like what their government's doing. And they're like, oh my God, inflation. I'm like, you wouldn't even know what inflation is. Okay, so it's like a 45 second video, but you don't need to watch the whole thing. It's good though, as you can tell. All right, but I like to simplify the content. You can use repurpose.io. It, it can take the watermark off of everything for you. Um, SaveTick.net is great for TikTok. Always have link trees or a milkshake or a beacons page or any of these linking websites. Just Google them if it's a little too fast for you, okay? Um, Trend Talk is where you can find out what sounds are trending, so you can make trending content a little bit faster. TikTok's about two weeks ahead of Instagram, for those of you who haven't figured that out yet. So if something is going crazy on TikTok, give it about two weeks, it'll go pop off on, on Instagram, so you can be one of the first people to use those sounds. CapCut is the app I just told you about where you can make these videos on your own. I just personally don't make them, but they're super easy to use. I've watched every single one of my leaders do it like crazy. Uh, my German leader went nuts with this, he was showing me how to do it, and then my Mexican leader, was like, it's so easy. You da, da, da. I'm like, you're just fast, okay? But it is simple for sure. CapCut Clips is a great uh, Apple Store app where you can do the same thing. You're creating the content inside of it with zero watermarks. And like I said, if you really want to simplify your content, you can use a virtual assistant. The goal, though, is omnipresence. And I know some of you have this thing in your mind where you go, well, I want to build a brand, but I really want to focus on name the app. You know what I mean? Everyone's like, I got to get really good first at uh, Facebook. And then once I'm good at Facebook, then I'm going to try Instagram. And then once I'm good at Instagram, then I'll try whatever. See, I don't subscribe to that because you're not ever going to be able to master something because you never really know what's going to be coming. And then eventually maybe you'll master something, but there's still going to be something new coming. Do you understand? So why don't you just focus on being a masterful brand? Why don't you just focus on omnipresence? And I don't know if any of you have ever noticed, but I don't know what it is, but unless you're spending a bunch of money, it seems to me like Mark Zuckerberg does not like us, <laughs> right? Has anyone been in a Facebook jail before? You're like, come on, man, like for real, I can't post anything for whatever. I called a Ferrari truck, you know, like the wannabe Lamborghini, like a roost, you know, <laughs> okay? I called it ugly. All I said was ugly on the Ferrari SUV and it went banned from lives for a month. I'm like, Haters. Clearly, he drives a Ferrari, but whatever. Okay, so I got in trouble for that, but whatever. I had no control over that. Currently, I'm in Instagram live jail. It's been like three weeks. What's going on? It doesn't really matter. You wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't just tell you that, because I was just live an hour and a half ago on Facebook and YouTube and TikTok. It doesn't matter. My podcast is still getting uploaded. Everything is still happening. It doesn't matter. Some of you are like, what, what if your Instagram goes away tomorrow? Some of you are screwed, okay? So there, there are real dangers of having one platform. And my favorite reason you all should be omnipresent is for international expansion. I ran one incentive, well, not one incentive, I ran an incentive trip to Dubai. This picture, like I said, is from two weeks ago. I don't, how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there were 12 people. There were 12 people, there were nine countries. They're all frontline recruits. Whoa, right? Because I keep going, I'm everywhere. My podcast gets shared everywhere. You get the little metrics. It's huge in Italy. Can you even understand me in Italy? What the hell? Oh, whatever. I don't care. It's huge. It's huge. It's allowed for massive business expansion. Okay? So the goal is the omnipresence. And then you go and you reach out, you reach out, you reach out, you reach out, you do the calls to action. So would you like some calls to actions that work well? Okay. 
If you look at anything I write, any of my copy, there will never be a post I ever make without a call to action. Never. Never. I'm not wasting my time and losing leads. I need to present the opportunity, okay? So I need more people, right? So I'm constantly doing calls to action. And calls to action, I think a lot of you are overthinking this. You don't have to have special finesse with any of it, right? You just got to make sure you're doing it. So here are some that work really well. These are questions, first of all. I just give you a couple examples. And you can do this in your live video. You can do this on your static posts. You can do this in your reels after you hook them at the beginning of the reel. Okay, so like, hey, what do you think about da 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 da? People are obsessed with their own opinions. Have you noticed? Have any of you, like, I mean, you don't have to get controversial at all, okay? Like, I'm actually not controversial online. Well, in general, I'm not controversial, but like, I just, just popped in my head when I was writing this out. Like, have you, some of you are a little controversial. Have you ever said, hey, so what do you guys think about what's going on with Balenciaga right now? Do you think you might get some engagement? I'm going to guess yes. Right? It doesn't have to be something that dramatic, by the way. It could be anything. Ask them their opinion on, hey, are, did you guys see what's happening in, in, in uh, the World Cup? Any opinions? Does anyone think Argentina's going to win? Because it's like Messi's last, time, any, last chance? No, yes, no. You don't care? Too many Americans here? Okay. <laughs> Try that again in a different audience later. <laughs> All right? But what do you think? What do you think about that? What is your favorite whatever? What's your favorite place to vacation? What's your favorite color? Hey guys, what's going on? What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite restaurant? Like I'm in the mood to eat something later, but I don't really know what. What do you guys think? What, what do you, what's your favorite food, right? What, what would you do if blah, blah, blah? What would you do if you made a million dollars in the next year? Some of you should think about that because you just might, right? Now the little tip at the bottom, ask questions inside of your brand. Right, so maybe I say something like, hey guys, where's your favorite place to travel? It's inside my brand. Hey guys, what do you want me to coach on next? I'm gonna go live after this and train on something. What do you want? You're getting direct feedback. Great way to build a brand. Some of you just do not encourage comments. Drop a this in the comment. It could be a heart in the comments, a flame in the comments, or whatever. You're boosting your own algorithm every single time that you encourage comments. What are your plans for the holidays? What are you doing for New Year's? Do you celebrate New Year's, right? Did you know that, that Hanukkah and Christmas has the same dates this year, right? Yeah, we have some Jews in the building, love it, all right? What would you do if, whatever, comment your favorite, et cetera, you get it. And then ask for recommendations, right? Example, I'm looking for, like, okay, easy, women, okay? I'm looking for what pair of shoes I should wear today. Should I wear this pair or this pair? I knew I was gonna wear this pair, okay? All right, but anyway, I wasn't actually looking for a recommendation. Nails are an easy one if you do nails. Should I do this color or this color? Guys, should I leave the beard, should I shave the beard? I don't know, right? Okay, what would, um, you can see all of it, right? Like, do you know of any good barber shops? Ooh, God, I'm not good at pretending to be a man. Okay, all right? <laughs> Comment them below. I'm looking for whatever, something new, any recommendations, new haircut, new this, whatever. Just ask for more calls to action. A lot of you are like, my social media is bad. It's bad because people are looking at it, but nobody's commenting. And then if nobody's commenting, then you can't comment back. And if they're not commenting back, then you can't tell them to share. If you can't tell them to share, then you can't grow your brand. Do you understand? All right. So, thank you. Above all, remember we're all in the business of relationships. This is all a relationship business. The good people win most, I promise you. Some of you need to remember that. Become rich in relationships. You're all in the right building, those of you who are here. You're in the right event for those of you that are watching virtually. Get to know people, because then you too will become rich in finances too. And remember, it's brick by brick by brick. Thank you. I love you guys. I appreciate you. My name's Jesse Lee. I'm a change your life. I'm a change your life. I'm a change your life. So we're not going to let her go yet. We got one other thing we want to do. Everybody have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. And uh, those at, at home, throw some fire into the chat if you got some value from this. Yay. I want to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Um, first question is... On average, how many customers do you personally add? How much sales volume do you personally do on a monthly basis based upon uh, your, your media presence? Um, my personal sales volume is always over $400,000 a month. A month, personal sales volume. From her to customers. 
over $400,000 a month. Yeah. Um, how many customers does that up to, add up to approximately? Oh, I have thousands. Yeah, that's thousands. And then oh. new, like two to 300 every single month. No, I'm, I'm so two to 300 new and new then I have ones. thousands. And you have old, you know, ones that are just repeat orders. Yep. So two to 300 new customers every month. How many um, new team members uh, approximately yeah. on a monthly basis? I like 75. So on average, two and a half a day, something like that. So if you wonder if it's worth it, um, when, when we started talking about this, I don't know, three, four years ago? Yeah. You're... Well, you challenged, okay, you got on a mastermind call. So yes. the next level mastermind, you were like, I'm taking my brand to the next level. Okay, you don't talk like that, but that's how I heard it. And you're like, I'm going to be on Twitch and TikTok and Instagram. And I was like... Well, then I'm going to do that, too. Like, you better watch this. And I didn't as much as I talked about it, and she actually did. Um, so I remember, I'm guessing three years ago, four years ago, you had about 3,000 team members and, like, 50,000 customers or something. Yeah. Is that, is that about right Probably. in that range? Something like that, yeah. And the distributor number was kind of lower, then I would have liked to see it. It was very customer heavy. Some of you have customer heavy organizations and you're trying to build the, the builders. So what is it three years later, what is it now approximately, uh, builders and customers? About 20,000 builders and 1.6 million customers. So the ratio's kind of kind of held. How many customers? 1.6 million. 1.6 million that have ever ordered. Yeah. Uh, on so, the website, because we also do other So things. not necessarily ordering every month. Correct. Right. So I've ever, ever ordered, and about 20,000, those are active or total? Yeah, active. Active distributors. So if you wonder what kind of scale you can get from this, it's enormous. Because this is something that she's not, able to, not only been able to do, but she's been able to teach yeah. within her organization. And because her media is so broad... Her income, there's a big gap because, I mean, imagine if you had a thousand frontline distributors a year. It's nice. What that would do, what that would do to your overall income versus somebody who has 20 a year. And she has a thousand, so she has this big advantage because she just decided to take the media seriously and build that. Okay, so. If you wonder about scale, if you wonder about duplication, if you wonder about, is this possible for you? Can I start and figure this out, right? How many, you know, if, if, if Jesse Lee moved into your house, you feel like you maybe do a little bit more on social media over the next 90 days, how many feel? You would, right? So, what I wanna do, I wanna put you on the spot. Can I put you on the spot? Yes. Okay. It won't be an uncomfortable spot, don't worry. Um, Yes, I would like you to give the entire GoPro community a challenge right now to do a post right now. We're going to take 10 minutes and we want every single person who's watching this and everybody on their teams to do a post that will start them down this journey, that will start getting some engagement, that will start a com conversations with people. Okay, so what, what would that post be? Easy. Uh, so one of my favorite things to do every once in a while is it's actually on paper, so, or you could do it on an iPad if you're fancy or whatever, but you could just write something like, um, I'm watching, or I'm learning, you can put in your own words, but something like, I'm learning at, a, at one of my favorite events of the year, I'm in Las Vegas, or virtually doing whatever, um, where in the world are you watching this from? Or where in the world are you seeing this from? Comment below. You'll get ridiculous engagement. So you're going to hold up the... the yeah, page? like and take a selfie, you know, like write it on a sheet of paper or whatever. Says, take a selfie. I'm, I'm, at my, I'm at GoPro 2022 yeah. from wherever you are in the world. Where are you seeing this from? Yeah, comment below. Where are you seeing this from? Comment below. So you're going to hold that up on a piece of paper. We got to find some, piece, some paper for those of you in the room. Get some markers or whatever. Hold it up. You can hold it up here in the studio in front of all this glitz and stuff. Hold it up, and you're going to post that. 
Okay? And then she already gave you some great things to say to the people who comment. I did. So you already have some assignments on what to do with that. Okay? So we're going to give you 10 minutes. Everybody's going to get 10 minutes to be able to make this post. And one thing I'd love you to do is hashtag GoPro2022. So we can all look it up and see what, what everybody did with all of this. Okay? Hashtag GoPro2022. So... How many platforms you can should put it they put it on? You want to. I mean, it's a static post, so you're really kind of only looking. I mean, you could do a reel or a TikTok really fast, too. Like, hey, guys, what's up? I'm at Virtual GoPro 2022. Just wondering, where in the world are you watching this from? I want to see where my followers are from. Yeah. And I know you guys are overthinking. This I want to like see where my... If, you, if followers feels too weird for you, I want to see where my friends are from. Yeah. You know? Where are you watching this from? Very innocent, simple but people will jump in and, and make a okay. comment on that, okay? So everybody ready for the challenge? Everybody accept? If you're watching online, put a number one into the chat if you accept. And Jesse Lee, would you do me a favor? Yes. Would you do that exact challenge yeah, as soon as you it. go backstage? Sure. And you can look her up and you can see her version of it and uh, you, can, you can replicate that if you'd like. Perfect. All right? Everybody give Jesse Lee Ward a big round of applause. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And just to show you her commitment, she's in the middle of her company convention. They had day one yesterday. She flew in today for this. She's flying back to her convention later tonight. So it was really, really nice of her to be able to do that in the middle of all of that stuff because she's got a lot of responsibilities at her company convention. So anyway, we have 10 minutes. Do the assignment, get your piece of paper, get your marker, and get it posted. Face your fear and just take action, right? Just take action, move forward. See you in 10 minutes.